Potato. Good afternoon, I'm Jackie Felgate. It's four o'clock and these are our top stories. Six more lives lost on our worst day yet. As officials ask, could this be the peak? Breaking news, our tiniest patients threatened in a new cluster at the Royal Children's Hospital. Also, fear and frustration in the aged care sector as inspections spiral out of control. Dozens of schools closed for cleaning amid concerns senior students are falling behind. The verdict's in on Bunnings' Karen. Can she and others legally refuse to wear a mask? And parenting in a pandemic. How to talk to our kids about the growing COVID crisis. This is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Felgate. First at four, Victoria has reached a grim new milestone with a record 532 coronavirus cases confirmed overnight. There's hope this may be the peak, but if not, the Premier says drastic action could be taken to stem the surge in infections. Laurel Irving is in the newsroom for us. Laurel, you have details of an alarming new cluster. Jackie, this is very distressing. Just in the past half hour, we've learned of a new outbreak in the newborn intensive care unit at the Royal Children's Hospital. This is where our sickest little babies are treated. We have two parents, a healthcare worker and a little baby have all tested positive. This is a day of confronting news for Victoria. As you said, 532 new cases today. It's the first time our daily cases have been over 500. We've had another six Victorians die, five in aged care and a man in his 50s. We have 245 people in hospital and 44 are in intensive care. And the Premier says many of these cases are linked to workplaces people going to work even though they have symptoms. He says there are hardship payments available. He's promised to fast track them in case people are worried they're going to lose money from missing shifts while they're in isolation. He says if we don't start getting on top of this, extreme action will be needed. Next steps uh, may well have to include uh, closing a number of these industries if we continue to see people attending work. The Chief Health Officer says second waves around the world have been really challenging to get under control, but he is still hopeful Melbourne will come out of the other side of this. In fact, he's hoping that today is the worst day of the pandemic. We will get to the other side. Uh, again, modelling with our um, effective reproduction number um, that I've seen most recently suggests that uh, today should be the peak. Now, I'm not going to sit back and say today's the peak. Uh, we have to we have to see what happens in coming days. Jackie, I've just spoken to an infectious diseases expert. She says that while the lockdown may not have worked, she's very confident the masks will. We just have to give it some time. OK, thank you very much. Laurel Irving reporting live there. The number of cases in our aged care sector has spiralled to almost 700. It comes as state and federal governments join forces in a coordinated response to a growing tragedy. Chanel Vella has more. For families with loved ones inside aged care facilities, they say as the positive cases continue to rise, they're becoming increasingly worried and scared. Epping Gardens aged care facility is now one of the state's largest outbreaks. A week ago, they had one positive case. Today, staff are dealing with 77 positive cases. I've spoken to my mum when I was actually in there and she says, no matter how many times I call the button, nobody comes. Sam's 92-year-old mother is now in hospital after she tested positive. He worries that staff are falling ill and continuing to work. Whilst they're waiting for their test results to come back, they've actually been working in the centre. Laura's mother died at our care in Craigieburn after she was infected by a physio. Unfortunately, it just took one, one person without a mask uh, to be infected with the COVID virus. Um, and he did go in mum's room. For some private aged care facilities, um, the numbers are, are disturbing. Uh, there are now 84 cases uh, linked to St Basil's Home for the Aged in Faulkner, uh, 82 in Estia Aged Care in Ardea, 77 in Epping Gardens Aged Care in Epping, 62 uh, in Menorock Life Aged Care in Essendon, 53 in Glendale Aged Care in Werribee, 
57 in Kirkbray <coughs> Presbyterian Homes in Kilsyth, uh, and 50 in Estia Aged Care in Heidelberg. All up, there are now 683 active cases connected to aged care and around 400 health workers who are currently positive. It's um, heart-wrenching to see them working so hard in such a, an awful environment that, that they could be exposed to it too. And there are still worries around protective gear for workers. Across the board, uh, we are having some supply issues. We're assured that it's not necessarily because the supplies aren't here, but the more that it's a logistical issue of getting it out. Families we've spoken to say they would be happy for the army to step in if that's what it takes to bring the aged care outbreaks under control. Dozens of schools are now closed across Victoria, giving teachers, parents and students greater uncertainty about the rest of the year. Blake Johnson joins us live. Blake, there are increasing fears for how senior students are going to be able to cope. There are, Jackie. We've just checked with the Education Department. 58 schools across Victoria are closed today, mostly because of coronavirus. Some new additions to that list include Fountain Gate Secondary College, Melbourne Girls College and the Catholic Regional College in Sydenham. What it means for the years 11 and 12 students, especially those doing their VCE, is more disruption, unfortunately. And the Education Union is reporting students and teachers are increasingly stressed by what these near-constant changes are doing to kids' education. Caroline Chisholm Catholic College showed us a deep clean in progress there today. They had a positive case at the school last week. Now, the school was due to open on Wednesday, but the principal has made the decision to keep the school closed for an extra two weeks, just to give his students some certainty. Our Year 12, there's been so much this year that um, hasn't been able to happen. Um, we're trying to create little rituals along the way, but, but they have missed out on a number of things that would have happened in a normal year. Um, and, and it's their education that we're most concerned about. I just say to Year 12 students, uh, everyone's doing a different Year 12. Everyone is, has been disrupted and impacted by this. Uh, but you've got the best teachers anywhere in the world. Their support staff are second to none. Uh, families are supporting you. The system is supporting you as best as it possibly can. So a real juggling act for thousands of young adults who are going through, Jackie, what most of us remember yeah. to be a pretty stressful time before they throw in the threat of a global pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Blake. Senior police have warned mask protesters they risk arrest if they don't stop their childish behaviour. A woman who sparked outrage for confronting Bunnings staff on the weekend has refused to talk to Seven News about her actions. Tegan Doling reports. Despite being incredibly vocal in these social media videos at Bunnings, Kerry Nash had little to say to the media today. The 48-year-old was inside her Narry Warren home when Channel 7 door knocked this morning. She had the Premier's daily press conference on her TV. Moments later, the police arrived, saying she had called them for help. What did she that rang triple zero? Has she yeah. It is my right as a living woman. The mother of two social media videos have gone viral online after she argued with police about her human rights while refusing to wear a mask into a nearby Bunnings. What crime have I committed? You have breached the COVID restriction. It's and a under restriction. It's not a law. Another video has since surfaced online of an Australian post worker too being harassed. If you could stamp that, that would be wonderful. Being required to wear a mask under these circumstances is not a breach of Victorians' human rights. Behaviour Victoria's top cops have labelled as selfish. They've reiterated police have the power to fine and arrest anyone who fails to wear a mask and refuses to show their ID. The Prime Minister says Australia must push forward and focus on a solution to our economic woes. It comes despite the escalating virus crisis in Victoria and Sydney. Political reporter Taylor Aiken has the details. Get Australians back to work. That's the call from Prime Minister Scott Morrison as he announced the COVID-19 Coordination Commission will now shift its focus to economic recovery. The commission was initially set up by the government to provide advice and support about how to manage the pandemic response, including securing PPE and accessing testing equipment. The advisory board will now shift its focus to how to ensure Australia's economy recovers as quickly as possible 
possible by advising the government on how to minimise and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on businesses while also driving new jobs growth outlined by the government's job maker plan. We're about creating jobs. Jobs is the way out economically for Australia. Bringing the best minds together, bringing the country together to get behind the effort to ensure that we recover strongly from the COVID pandemic. Commission Chair Neville Power saying Australian businesses will need to learn how to adapt to operating within the restraints enforced by coronavirus. We'll be looking at how we can create as many jobs, get as many people back into work as possible and learn to live with the restrictions of the coronavirus of physical distancing, personal hygiene and quick response to outbreaks in businesses across Australia. Six new members will join the Commission board, skilled in financial services, small business, infrastructure and workplace relations. The Prime Minister saying while the health crisis isn't over yet, Australia must keep moving the economy forward. A magistrate has likened a fight over toilet paper to an on-field rugby league brawl. A mother and daughter were found guilty of a fray after the scuffle, which occurred during the panic buying frenzy in March. The pair lashed out at a shopper who snatched one of eight packets of toilet paper in their trolley. They received good behaviour bonds after their claims of self-defence were rejected. Meanwhile, police have chased down a man who tried to do a runner at the New South Wales-Queensland border. The illegal crossing came as the Sunshine State tightened its border rules, banning more than 600,000 people from a Sydney hotspot. Queensland's Premier has threatened to slam borders shut if New South Wales clusters continue to grow. It is a tough time for Victorian families living through the virus crisis. Many parents are wondering how they should talk to their children about topics ranging from masks to lockdown restrictions. A top psychologist will have the answers later in the bulletin. The Mayor of Colac has renewed pleas for his town to be locked down as coronavirus clusters continue to grow. And outbreaks in a meatworks has forced has 47 cases and today Defence Force personnel join local authorities to test the facility's entire workforce. Nick McCallum is there. Today this testing site opened specifically for employees of the Australian Lamb Company. Over the day 800 of them will be tested here. This is the second time the entire Meatworks workforce has been tested since the first employee at the site tested positive nine days ago. It's since become the biggest coronavirus cluster in regional Victoria. Were you surprised at how many people have tested positive? I was actually, yeah. yeah. I wasn't expecting it to get out this far. I knew that it was in Melbourne, but I wasn't expecting it to come to Colac. After their first test, some were told they did not have to self-isolate they roamed around town for two days before that advice changed. But Tiaporia did lock down. I just stayed at home, just drank beer and played games. With the cluster here growing, there's now an emergency control centre and many in town have already gone into self-imposed stage three restrictions. Many businesses have shut, the main street very quiet. It's in lockdown, I've been here 77 years and I haven't seen it this bad, yeah, never. But the mayor wants a formal lockdown. We're calling for the government to really have a hard look at implementing stage three restrictions on the schools, especially the public schools and also the nursing homes. As it is, schools like Sacred Heart Primary have huge non-attendance rates. We have six students here today. Um, our school has about 430 children as a rule. Tomorrow this site will be open specifically for members of the school community of Trinity College where there's also been a cluster. 500 of them should be tested here tomorrow before this facility is opened up to the general public. An Adelaide magistrate's facing jail time after confessing to corruption charges. Bob, Har Bob Harrop's admitted lying about who was driving his taxpayer-funded car when it was involved in traffic offences. He's also pleaded guilty to abusing public office in relation to a case he was hearing. He was sensationally arrested after an ICAC investigation and he's resigned from his position. 
A man found bleeding after a shooting in Melbourne's west. That's ahead in seven years. Also, the need for urgent action as our aged care crisis deepens. We'll have a live interview next. And how an heroic act helped a driver escape a fiery crash. We're back soon across Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. This is a very difficult thing for me to judge. It was uh, extraordinary. You moved me. And that's just the start. Let's do it. Gave me goosebumps. America's Got Talent on the new night, Tuesday, 7.30 on 7. Today you do everything on your phone, but when the power runs out, you're stranded all alone. And that's a big problem because you can't text and you can't call. But now there's PowerPod, the small but mighty emergency charger that fixes it all. So compact it fits right on your key ring. So you'll always have the extra power you need no matter where you are. And unlike bulky charging bricks that are heavy and force you to carry cables, PowerPod plugs right into all your devices, no cables needed. So you always have peace of mind and the power you need to check your email, send your texts, make and receive calls, use all your apps or follow your maps. It lets you get help during emergencies and makes it easy for kids to always keep in touch. So small yet so powerful, the secret is PowerPod's micro high velocity technology that delivers instant power that lasts for hours. But look, it's smaller than this coin. And when the power goes off at your house, you can always rely on PowerPod to keep your phone charged. Attach one to your key ring or your backpack, your handbag, even your briefcase. You can use PowerPod any place, so no matter where or when, you'll always have all the power you need. To recharge your PowerPod, just plug it in, then use it over and over again. This device is dead, but PowerPod gives you enough power to last for hours. Works with your Android and Apple mobile devices. So stop running out of power, because now you can have all the power you need right at hand. Call Global Shop Direct or go online now and get PowerPod for the low price on your screen. Simply select which device compatibility you need, Apple or Android. But wait, if you order right now, we'll double the offer. That's right, buy one, get one more. Keep one in your bag and one in the car. PowerPod gives you enough power to last for hours, but if you're not completely satisfied, send them back within 30 days for a full refund of the product price. Don't miss this buy one, get one more offer. Order today. Can you bring the glasses? Oh, it's annoying. They're still wet. To help avoid that, just add Finish Rinse Aid. It speeds up drying for drier and shinier dishes. Try Finish Rinse Aid today. Okay, long black for Dave, skinny latte for Dave, hot chockey for Dave, and cappuccino for David. Hey. Who's David? From a dollar each, shout the team at 7 Eleven. New Yumi's Veggie Burgers, the delicious way to eat less meat. With the goodness of fresh veggies and no preservatives, they're bursting with flavour. Great taste you could feel good about. New Yumi's Veggie Burgers. Does your energy provider chip in for your internet? Dodo does. Yep, we're an energy company and an internet company, which is why you get unlimited data on our NBN 50 plant for just 60 bucks a month when you also get electricity and gas. Switch at dodo.com. Melbourne's aged care crisis continues to worsen with almost 700 COVID cases now linked to the sector. For more, let's bring in Ian Yates, CEO of the Council on the Ageing. Kota, thank you for joining us. How worrying are the figures coming out of these facilities now? Oh, look, they're certainly very worrying um, and, you know, concerning to the highest degree. Uh, this is something that we need to be able to get on top of and we're not at the moment. And you're proposing a harder lockdown in aged care homes. Can you tell us what that would look like? Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily proposing it. It's been put to me that uh, one of the things that happened in the first wave in a number of states was government providing uh, health workers with uh, the accommodation so that they could self-isolate. Um, I think that's something that perhaps ought to be considered in the mix 
of trying to deal with some of the worst areas. It, it's a difficult thing to do at scale, mm. uh, but uh, it may be helpful. Uh, COVID uh, is entering into aged care because it's out there in the community. It's coming in, particularly through staff who are living in the community. Um, and we need to think about whether that's one of the ways that we can add to a, a shift in the balance here to change the odds a bit. Um, I, you know, it's something that experts sort of look at. It would require careful planning, but it needs to be with combined with all the efforts that governments now put in place, the, the, the new response centre that's coordinating efforts, stepping up uh, all control measures, really emphasising to providers that infection control is not something you plan without rehearsing. You have to rehearse it regularly. You have to be ready to step yeah. in as soon as something happens. The first 24 hours are absolutely critical. Um, and tell us what sort of toll this crisis is taking on our older Australians, even those who don't have the virus. They must be just so terribly worried. Well, look, um, obviously, older Australians have been concerned all along. Uh, the, many of the most vulnerable, of course, are to be found in residential aged care. That's why they're there. They've got other health conditions. So that the, really the critical thing in, in residential aged care is to keep it out uh, because uh, there isn't a treatment, there isn't much you can do uh, once it's uh, infected someone. Uh, but out in the community with the rates of transmission, yes, we know that older Australians are more vulnerable. Everybody is vulnerable, yeah. but they're more vulnerable. Uh, and it is of grave concern. Yeah, Ian Yates, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. A gunman is on the run after a shooting in Melbourne's west. Police found a man bleeding in a paddock near Werribee around 8 o'clock last night. It's believed he'd been shot in the leg. The man, in his 20s, was taken to hospital. The shooter is yet to be caught. A woman has been pulled from a fiery wreck by an off-duty paramedic in Blackburn. It's believed a car clipped the one in front of it before veering into an office building this morning. The car caught fire, the flames spreading. Two off-duty paramedics were driving past and one of them has actually pulled her out of the vehicle while the car was on fire. Police are investigating whether driver fatigue was a factor. Buildings torn apart as a hurricane rips across parts of North America. That's coming up in 7 News. Also, closer to home, Newcastle underwater after a burst of wild weather. And lockdown with little ones. How do we talk to our children about the growing crisis? Stay with us right here on 7. G'day, Andy and Mick, letting you know that the front bar's on Wednesday, not after the footy. Tigers! What if they lose? Ah, Tigers. The front bar, Wednesday after the footy on 7. Mika is a perfectionist when it comes to sculpting hedges. Just don't ask her for a short back and sides. That's terrible. It's amazing what you can't do. Task smarter. Air Tasker. Hey, babe. Hey, um, I've been held up. Where are you? You sound different. Do I? Yeah, you do. Oh. Please do. What? What did you buy? Yeah. Oh. Me too. The new T Rock and T Cross. You'll just want one. Volkswagen. When you've got a lot on the boil, books pretty much get the chop. But Audible can help you fit them back into your life, even when you're cooking up a storm. Bread, wine and books. Audible! With over 400,000 audiobooks. Sorry. It's books that fit with real life. Oh, Soz, that's me. <laughs> you know what it's like. Oh, there's another one and another one. Download now and get your first audiobook free. Voltaren Osteogel 12 hourly for a joint pain. She'll start exercising again. With just two applications a day, Voltaren Osteogel 12 hourly gives you joint pain relief for the whole day and all night. Actually, exercise is not so bad. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Not till after dinner. There's a glass and a half in everyone. In the world we were living in, life was sweet. 
Bitter sweet. All we needed was a little help. Help to realize that another life was possible. They gave us the courage to change. To change for good. To change for goodness. Baby Bell, join the goodness. Thanks for calling ING. It is Adam speaking. How can I help you? Uh, no, I'm currently working from home. Oh, you can call any time, so... Um... Sorry! <laughs> and she's currently nibbling at my toe right now. Yeah, working from home was a bit tricky at first, but... There's definitely been some stray farts, um, hasn't there, mate? And now your loan's on a fixed rate. Can I help you with anything else? No, nah, you made my day. Well, whatever 2020 throws at you, we're here for a chat any time. Too easy. For many Melburnians, the pandemic has been the most stressful time of their lives. It's hard enough for adults to accept life in lockdown. So what impact is the crisis having on our children? For his thoughts, we're joined by child and family psychologist Dr Michael Carr Gregg. Michael, thank you for your time. How should parents explain to their kids what's happening in Melbourne right now? Well, I think they should be guided by their uh, curiosity. And I think we need to be very clear um, that we set the emotional tone, we're alert, but we're not alarmed. Uh, things have gotten a little bit out of uh, shape, but um, we're gonna get through this and um, uh, we need to be optimistic. Are you hearing reports of children having increased anxiety in lockdown? Look, there are some young people who are increasingly anxious. They've had to uh, stop school, then start school, then stop school and start school, which yeah. is of course very upsetting. Um, but I think, by and large, most kids are uh, using their parents as a barometer and they're coping surprisingly well. So, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about the behaviours that we need to be aware of? How should we tell this kind of news to our kids? Well, first of all, we've got to be looking out for changes in their behaviour. So if they're not sleeping well, they're having nightmares, if they're off their food or they're more clingy, that's probably a sign that they're not coping. We should probably ring our GP. The most important thing is for us to limit media exposure, make sure that they get enough sleep, make sure they eat healthily and get a bit of exercise. And how can parents protect their kids if we're not feeling like we're coping very well ourselves? Well, I think we can always ask for help. Uh, one of the great things we now have is uh, the internet and we can ring our GP for help and GPs can make referral to people like me and uh, we can help. Dr. Michael Carr-Gregg, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Jackie. Hurricane Hannah has left a trail of destruction across parts of the US and Mexico. In Texas, buildings were torn apart and roads flooded. Northern Mexico also felt Hannah's power, wild winds tearing down billboards and trees, with residential streets now underwater. It's been downgraded to a tropical storm. And witnesses have recorded what appears to be a tornado making its way across northeast England. The funnel cloud can be seen whipping up debris as it moves across the sky, though it only caused minor damage. Businesses and homeowners north of Sydney are counting the cost of last night's deluge in New South Wales. The rain on the east coast caused severe flash flooding. The water was coming through with such force. I thought that I couldn't get out. I could see my car floating. If I stood in that water, I'd get bowled over. Some drivers risked their lives finding out the hard way as they became stuck. A family tragedy as one woman is found dead and another unconscious in a home. That's ahead on 7 News. Also, the rights and wrongs of human rights. Can Bunnings Karen really be forced to wear a mask? And the end of an era with the death of a silver screen centenarian. We're back in just a couple of minutes. You always remember your first date. People will talk about the stars aligning and a few sparks flying at the moment. He's found the one. Or has he? We're here. I feel at home already. I've sort of already marked my territory. Tonight, 7.30, one girl will go home. Who have you chosen? New Farmer wants a wife. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. Jess, I love your take on those metrics. Now, Greg, let's talk optics. Ah, uh, is that a pie chart? Because that's a sexy pie chart.
Grab a tasty power lunch at 7-Eleven. Your local Bunnings is here to help with Drive and Collect. You can shop online for a huge range of emergency repairs and maintenance essentials and pick them up without getting out of your car. We want to make it easy to get what you need. It's like having Bunnings at your fingertips. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Zinc. Because sometimes it's more than just growing pains. Pooper offers an online program to help you manage your mental well-being. Pooper, because life happens. Call today. We know you've always worked hard for your money. In these uncertain economic times, who do you trust to protect your wealth? Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager and leading credit specialist. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years. With McDelivery, Macca's comes to you contact free. For a limited time, get free delivery on Macca's orders $25 or more via the Uber Eats app. Search Macca's social pages for the promo code. Right now at Snooze, Velocity members can save up to 40% off regular prices store-wide. Save up to 40% off mattresses and bed frames. And for this week only, get triple Velocity points store-wide. Hurry, save on now. What a little Snooze can do. This is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Felgate. Good afternoon again. Our top stories this Monday. Six more lives lost on our worst day yet. As officials ask, could this be the peak? Also, fear and frustration in the aged care sector as infections spiral out of control. Dozens of schools closed for cleaning amid concerns senior students are falling behind. Our tiniest patients threatened in a new cluster at the Royal Children's Hospital. Daniel Andrews will consider shutting down hard-hit industries as workplace infections drive a massive spike in coronavirus cases. Today's figure is a record 532, but there's hope this may be our peak. Cameron Bow has today's developments. Victoria's second wave of COVID-19 is still building. 532 new cases is another record daily high. The vast majority have unknown origins, placing even more pressure on contact tracing investigators. Workplaces, particularly aged care centres, the current hotbed of infection. We have too many people who have symptoms and they are going to work. And what that means, even with mask wearing, even with hand hygiene. Six more Victorians have died, five women who ranged in age from their 70s to their 90s, and a man aged in his 50s. Five of those deaths were due to outbreaks in aged care. Our hearts are with um, the families and the residents. We're doing what we can and we're asking for everybody to, to support us while we try and get on top of what's an awful situation in Victoria. The virus is still spreading rapidly through aged care homes. 15% of the state's active cases of COVID-19 are linked to the sector. St Basil's Aged Care at Faulkner in the city's north has the worst outbreak with 84 cases. A severe spike at Epping Gardens has seen its cluster total triple in 24 hours to 77. In order to stem the spread, some aged care residents with COVID are now being transferred to private hospitals. The level of testing remains high with a further 17,500 tests conducted yesterday. 245 Victorians are in hospital with COVID-19, 44 fighting for their lives in intensive care. Cameron Bow, 7 News. There's growing anger towards COVID deniers who film themselves breaching public health restrictions. They claim it's their legal right to disobey the Chief Health Officer's orders. And for an expert legal opinion, here's Michael Stanton from Liberty Victoria. Michael, thank you for your time. Let's clear all this up once and for all. Is being forced to wear a mask a breach of our human rights? No, it's not. Uh, as far as Liberty Victoria is concerned, it's a reasonable limitation to our rights. We're in extraordinary times and in these extraordinary times 
the government's unfortunately been required to introduce some measures that do limit some of those rights, such as being required to wear a mask when outdoors. Now, there's competing rights. Mm. There's also the right to health, the right to life for those people who are very vulnerable to this condition. So at Liberty Victoria, we are of the view that the limitation to rights is a reasonable restriction. For people going into Bunnings, that raises different issues as well. I mean, a store can set conditions for entry, such as, you know, no shoes, no entry. Um, the Charter of Human Rights, whilst it protects all Victorians, um, doesn't apply to private businesses, and they're well within their rights to set restrictions that apply to everyone equally. There's no discrimination in requiring everyone to wear a mask. Um, and the stay-at-home directions themselves have exceptions for people that mm. can't reasonably wear a mask yeah. because, of their, because of health issues, which is fair enough. So what could happen to people who refuse to wear a mask? Could they actually be jailed? Is there a law that covers that? Uh, there's a fine. Um, so uh, there's a fine of $200. And we at Liberty Victoria, we are concerned about the fine because some people might be in a position where they're not in a position to pay it. And uh, we're also concerned that it would be better, we think, from Liberty Victoria's perspective, if um, those enforcing the laws handed out masks rather, at least at first instance, yeah. rather than handing out fines. Uh, particularly for people who might not have very good English or might come from diverse backgrounds who might not quite understand the obligations they have. So at Liberty Victoria, we think the first port of, uh, port of call should be to provide masks to people. But, look, um, it is common, I suppose, that people will challenge authority, but we're a bit concerned at Liberty Victoria that some of these challenges are misguided. They come from uh, what's known as the sovereign citizen movement, which has been sort of widely discredited and where people think that laws don't apply to them if they refuse to consent. And uh, that's not the case. The laws apply to all of us equally. Michael, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. A 62-year-old woman's under police guard after the death of her elderly mother at their Adelaide home. The 92-year-old's body was found at the Elizabeth North property last night. Her unconscious daughter was taken to hospital and has been detained under the Mental Health Act. Detectives are still trying to determine exactly what happened. I've seen her. She's quite elderly. When I do talk to her, she's just a hi, how are you? And then it's back inside. But besides that, she, she keeps to herself. She waters her garden. She feeds the birds. Police don't believe anyone else was involved in the tragedy. The last surviving star of Hollywood's golden age, Olivia de Havilland, has died at the age of 104. As US correspondent Paul Caddick reports, she starred in one of the most famous movies of all time. Good afternoon. A legend from Hollywood's golden age, Olivia de Havilland was already a rising star when she had her defining role of Melanie in 1939's Gone with the Wind. You're so wrong. Scarlett loves you a great deal. It delivered her first Oscar nomination. She would eventually win two Academy Awards for Best Actress through a career spanning six decades and some 49 films. Her on-screen chemistry with Australia's Errol Flynn creating movie magic through the 1930s and 40s, appearing together in nine films. I did adore having Errol Flynn kiss me. The most charming and most magnetic and most attractive man I think I've ever met. De Havilland was also a pioneer, successfully suing the Warner Brothers studio in 1944 in a big win for actors' rights. It was such a frightening thing to do. She felt what was unfair was a contract that could keep you in bondage to a studio for many, many years. She also had a legendary rivalry with her younger sister, actress Joan Fontaine. Honoured throughout her life, President George W. Bush awarded her the National Medal of Arts, and three years ago she was made a Dame Commander of the British Empire. Olivia de Havilland passed away peacefully in her home in Paris. She was 104. Amazing life. Time for Sport Now with Sean Salby. And, Sean, the Pies cannot take a trick. Yes, Jack, the Pies have once again been hit hard on the injury front. We'll have a live report with the latest next. Plus, the Tigers welcome back a big gun for Wednesday night's Bulldog Battle. And an Aussie MotoGP rider caught up in the chaos in Spain. Captain Strand, we want you to come down to Texas to build an entire station from scratch. Okay, but I choose the firefighters. Have you got what it takes to fight? 
crew can't just be good. They got to be the best. Rob Lowe. Let's show them all we got. And Liv Tyler. In Texas, you do what I say, Captain. Get ready for the new action thrill ride. 911 Lone Star. Tonight, 8.30 on 7. If you need help getting on top of your finances or if you're looking for a better deal on a personal loan, Society One may be just the thing for you. Isn't that right, Nikki? That's right, Karen. Society One is an Australian-owned, award-winning marketplace lender offering personal loans between $5,000 and $50,000. Now, the great thing is, is that you choose the loan term and repayment option that best suits you, plus payments are fixed, which helps with sticking to a budget. So whether taking out a loan to make maybe home improvements, sorting out unexpected expenses or even consolidating debts, Society One can help. Absolutely. By creating a personalised rate based on your individual credit history, Society One is often able to give lower rates than what you'd get from a big bank. So you simply apply online to receive your obligation-free quote in as little as two minutes. If approved, you could have the money in just one business day. It's that simple. Sounds great, Nikki. So to receive your personalised quote, head over to society1.com.au. We took Crimsafe, Australia's strongest security door and a competitor's door, and put them to the test. If it's not Crimsafe, it's not Crimsafe. We're coming to you live from the scene. Tell us what you've got there. Toilet paper? Ah, just dinner stuff. You must have paid an unprecedented price for that during these unprecedented times. Ah, they're from Aldi. Prices are always low. Let's just go. Whatever happens, our low prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. Here's Lisa. She got no assistance lifting this heavy bag of cement and sprang a leak. But Lisa has poise. New Poise Thin and Discreet Extra Pads are 45% thinner than Poise Extra Pads with the same protection. It takes poise. Pino Clean Simply Wipes are our new way to disinfect. They kill 99.9% .9 of germs with a plant-based disinfectant active and they're made with 100% biodegradable fibres. New Pino Clean Simply. With Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance, we guarantee all the repairs we authorise. Hi. Good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that, uh, Leon's feeling. Search for a quote today. Your trash, someone else's treasure. Aussie families turning spring cleaning into cash. The boom in second hand on Sunrise tomorrow. Hello again. The Magpies have taken another hit with Skipper Scott Pendlebury sidelined for up to for multiple weeks. Let's cross live now to Rory Campbell and Rory Collingwood. They can't take a trick. And Sean, well, just as it looked as though they were set for a boost with the return of steel side bottom from suspension, they've learnt they'll have to cope without skipper Scott Pendlebury for at least a couple of games, with the Pies due to play four matches inside the space of two weeks. If he doesn't recover quickly, that could well blow out. The Pendlebury had scans this morning after he was pulled from the clash with the Eagles, just moments before the bounce after feeling tightness in his quad with one of his final warm-up kicks. Despite having to watch on as his side was comprehensively beaten, the scan results show it was the smart decision. Yeah, I think we made the right call not, not to play. Obviously, if there's a little strain there and you, and you continue to play or try and play through that, it, it might rip into something you know, far more significant. So, yeah, unfortunate that I'll, I'll probably miss the next couple of games, but um, is what it is and support the boys now and hopefully we can get a couple of wins. Massive blow. And, Rory, the Tigers have a big-name inclusion for Wednesday night's clash against the Dogs. Now, Sean, after three games without their skipper, Richmond will welcome back Trent Cochin. He's been doing plenty of extras on the side away from main training to make sure he's good to go. And the Tigers have been playing it cautiously given his history of hamstring injuries. Richmond and the Dogs start off this 20-day football feast we're set to embark on and Cochin has uh, con consolidated with his teammates and convinced them he's ready. Good training session today, so yeah, uh, the plan is he'll play, so um, obviously massive in our captain and um, it was great to have him back out there. Yeah, he's done a great job of getting back up and, um, yeah, I think he'll, um, he'll play well this week. 
It isn't all good news for the Tigers. Defender David Asprey, he'll miss at least one more game as he recovers from that knee injury. But Sean, the skipper, certainly a handy inclusion as they look to bounce back from that loss to the Giants. He sure is. Thanks, Rory. Manchester United will return to the Champions League next season, needing to avoid a loss to fifth place Leicester to secure a top four finish. United broke the Foxes' hearts with a 2-0 win in the final match of the Premier League season. Champion Liverpool finished with its equal highest ever points tally of 99 after beating Newcastle 3-1, while Aston Villa players had to listen to Arsenal versus Watford on the radio to find out if they'd be relegated. And the news is the news they wanted to hear. Villa avoided the drop after drawing with West Ham and Watford lost to Arsenal. England's Stuart Broad is on the verge of becoming only the seventh man to reach 500 test wickets. Broad tore through the West Indies batting lineup on day three of the third test, taking all six wickets. Edge and good catch, good low catch from Joe Root. Broad has five. After a quick fire, 226 from England, Broad reduced the tourists to two for ten in their second innings, ending the day on 499 test wickets. The West Indies need 389 runs to win with two days to play. There was carnage at the MotoGP in That's Spain. a nasty old impact, wasn't it? Oliveira landing right. Oh, oh dear. And he got hit by him as well. Aussie Jack Miller also crashed out as Fabio Quattararo claimed the win, while a rider was stretched from the track in the Moto3 race. Jack, that's all for sport. And coming up tonight now, 6 o'clock bulletin, we'll cross to Geelong injured skipper Joel Selwood ahead of tonight's game against the Dockers. One of our faves, Sean. Yeah, what a legend. <laughs> Thanks very much. There are growing calls for a review of the taxes Victorians pay when buying a home. As Louisa Cheatley reports, lower fees could help people looking to buy a home during the pandemic. Good afternoon. The new report has revealed Victorians buying a new home are handing up to a third of their hard-earned money to the government. People buying new homes in estates and growth suburbs are paying up to 34% in government taxes and levies like stamp duty and GST, prompting calls for change at a time when buying a home is becoming increasingly difficult for Victorians hit hard by COVID-19. We need a more equitable way to deliver the services and infrastructure that new communities need. If we're serious about housing affordability here in Victoria, we need to look at those charges and we need to get them down. Out of the $200,000 for a block of land in our growth suburbs, around $62,000 is spent on government tax and charges. A buyer of an off-the-plan apartment selling for $685,000 would fork out around $130,000. Hisham Nidham is looking to buy a home, but he's surprised by the hidden costs. It definitely caught me by surprise that in this process the government could potentially be profiting more than the developer. The report is calling for a moratorium on new taxes and radical change to slash red tape to keep the Australian dream of owning a home alive. Struggling fashion swimwear brand Sea Folly is set to be saved from collapse. It's believed administrators have settled on a potential new owner, American-owned private equity company Al Catterton. Sea Folly entered administration late last month. Thanks for being with us here on 7 News this Monday. Our top stories are next, plus the very latest weather. It's come down to this play. Struck it well. Struck it well. Oh, hit it hard. Hit it hard. It's the history-making event. What a giant kick. Queensland. Beautiful one day. AFL the next. And it starts with four big nights in a row. Wednesday, two powerhouses clash. Thursday, demons versus power. Friday, two of the hottest teams in the com, leading to Saturday's top eight showdown. History will be made with four nights in a row. Starting Wednesday, go to the footy on seven. <laughs> Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. When
pain and fever symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes, lasts for up to 8 hours and is trusted by 9 out of 10 Australian parents. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important as well. If you've got sensitive teeth, you should be looking for something to help with the sensitivity, but you should also be thinking about, do I need to look after my gums? Using the new Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health when used twice a day, every day. I think it's fantastic to have a dual action toothpaste. Two benefits with the one toothpaste, what a great idea. Tired of cleansers that leave skin dull? The power of micellar with the glow of rose water. New Garnier Micellar Rose Water Cleanser. Micelles lift dirt like a magnet. In one swipe removes makeup and reveals the glow. New Micellar Rose Water by Garnier. Naturally. Be quick. Energy Australia's winter warmer deal is in its last days. Switch and get a $50 electricity sign-up credit and a $50 gas sign-up credit. But hurry, offer ends July 31. Join today. At Harvey Norman, our stores are open with teams practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Buy now on 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card up to the value of $500. Shop for essential tech to keep working, a new appliance or a bigger sofa or better mattress to make staying home more comfortable. Shop in store or online with both click and collect and delivery available. Take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card. Harvey Norman stores are open. This winter, cut your cold and flu short with EasyCold and reduce the severity of symptoms. Shorten your cold and get better quicker with EasyCold. She's found the super nerd sign of weakness. He gets a bit twitchy when he's not sure, so he's got a bit of a tell. You pretty much summed up the super nerd. But can she use it to beat him? The game that'll really get him twitchy. Who is the younger daughter of King George VI? New The Chase, weekdays at 5 on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. Live from Melbourne, you're watching Seven's Afternoon News. This is a live look at the city from high above Docklands and Jane Bunn is here in just a couple of minutes. Right now, though, Peter Mitchell is working on tonight's edition of Seven News at Six. And Mitch, you've got new details on the state's most worrying COVID cluster. That's right, Jackie. As we know, 532 new cases today and six more deaths, five of them in aged care facilities. St Basil's in Faulkner now has 84 cases, while another 82 cases have been linked to Estia Aged Care in Ardea. This is a crisis right across Melbourne. Tonight, we'll look at what authorities say is keeping our case numbers so high. Also tonight, the warning from senior police to mask protesters. This woman has filmed herself burning masks in a fire pit. She's encouraging other Victorians to stop wearing them. Police say that kind of behaviour is childish and irresponsible. Just extraordinary, Jackie, as this afternoon we learn there's an outbreak at the Royal Children's Hospital's neonatal intensive care unit, Jackie. Yeah, so distressing. We'll see you then. Thank you very much, Mitch. Let's take a quick look at Melbourne's roads now. Good afternoon, I'm Jess in the Sheen Panel Service traffic chopper just over the west gate at the moment where there's been a multi-car pile-up. This is outbound at Grieve Parade. As you can see, during the collision, two of the cars have gone into the barrier and with three lanes closed, delays are quite bad, stretching back across the bridge and only getting worse by the minute. Had a smash, Sheen Panel Service is open and offering essential service workers up to $600 off their insurance excess. T's and C's available at sheengroup.com.au. Well, most dogs are big fans of ISO walks. That's not the case for this St Bernard tackling England's tallest mountain. Daisy was on a hike with her owners when she became exhausted and refused to budge. A rescue team was called in to help bring down the out-of-puff pooch on a stretcher. Daisy finally made it home 
where she's now recovering. It's a dog after my own heart. <laughs> Time now for an update on the weather with Jane Bunn. And Jane, it's been a fairly great start to the week. Jack, it has indeed. And we're looking fairly similar once again tomorrow. But then the sun will come out on Wednesday. We started on nine and only reached 13 and a half. Geelong rose to 15 as they had sunshine this morning. But the clouds swept right through again and we have showers about the outer fringes. Now these are now pushing through more of these east Eastern suburbs set to spread right on through in the next few hours. Outside now, it is just 12 in the city, 11 in these outer fringe suburbs here. It's 12 in Hastings. Melbourne's cloud is the edge of a huge area of cloud in eastern Victoria. Southeast winds are pushing rain across much of Gippsland, with a little of that spilling over the ranges around Wodonga. There's another band of that cloud in the west with drizzle that doesn't add up to much, but it does push right up through to the Mallee. So conditions outside now it's through Gippsland, 12 degrees right on through there, but 8 in Ballarat, 10 in Hamilton and 16 in Mildura. Malakuta's now had 60 millimetres and these shaded parts could see as much as 150 by the time it finishes on Wednesday morning. Now that brings the risk of flash flooding as well as rising rivers. The Alps also have damaging winds tonight and that is all caused by a deep low that is off the New South Wales coast. Areas just to the south pick up the heaviest rain as we saw earlier in the Bulletin in Newcastle. Now that low is set to move just off the coast tomorrow and further out to the Tasman midweek. So we'll continue to get rain streaming into Gippsland. The intensity eases back tomorrow thanks to that slight movement of the low. Then it dries up completely on Wednesday morning as it clears the area. Around the nation tomorrow is still wet in Sydney but only 10 millimetres more. The low is too far south for them. All dry in Hobart and Adelaide. To Victoria in Gippsland we've got the persistent rain that drops back to widespread showers in the morning then eases further later on. Elsewhere areas of morning fog and frost then cloud lingers over much of the south but generally sunny north of the divide. And in Melbourne another mostly cloudy day a top tomorrow 15. After tonight's showers pushing right through generally dry tomorrow but you'll still want an umbrella if you're in outer northeastern suburbs but the rest is dry tomorrow. Yeah, missing the sunshine Jane. Uh, Wednesday that's your day. Good to hear thank <laughs> you. And that is all from Melbourne's afternoon news. Thanks Thanks for joining us. At six, Peter Mitchell has details of churchgoers being fined for breaching COVID restrictions. For now, though, from the Seven News team, take care.